Okay, cool. We're recording. Yes. Yeah. Tanya, hi. It's so good to see you. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> Hello, okay. Tanya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, this is Gus and Anders, his brother, nice. um, the Hamiltons, and they're the studio managers at Brooklyn Clay. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, tell us a little bit about like where you are and what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so I'm living in Cleveland right now. I, um, I teach at the University of Akron. So it's about 45 minutes south from where I live in Cleveland. Um, I teach ceramics there. Um, I make some stuff here at home. So because Cleveland's a little bit more affordable than where I was in New York, I can, you know, get like a two bedroom place and then dedicate one bedroom as like a home working space. And then also be able to use the university for the bigger equipment, like the, you know, kilns and things that you generally want to share in a ceramics kind of artist situation. How long are you going to be there? How long am I going to be there? Yeah. That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Because um, I remember on, on Instagram, you had posted something about the what view of Lake Erie you like the best. So tell yeah. us, like, what's been happening. Oh, yeah. Like, um, a little bit about. So I left New York for Cranbrook um, up by Detroit, out by Detroit. Um, and then I was there for two years. And then I took a hiatus and I went on a Fulbright over to Hungary for a year. And then when I returned from that, I landed in Toledo. So that's kind of about an hour away from Detroit. And then I was there for a year and then out to Cleveland. So I've kind of just been migrating back towards New York via the coastline <laughs> of Lake Erie. So yeah. That's awesome. So maybe Buffalo is next? Maybe or Buffalo. Maybe. Yeah, I'll stick with that. <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah. You get a full, you've like almost got a full tour of the rest. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so tell us like what, what was Hungry like? What did you do? Uh, so I was based in a small town called Peach in the southern part of Hungary, um, right near the Zsolnai factory. So Hungary has like two major ceramics factories. There's Herend and then there's um, Zsolnai. Um, so Herend is more known for tableware, perhaps, and then Jolnai is known for more like figurines, and also they have these really incredible roof tiles that, that they made for a really long period of time as well. So much more like architectural, large pieces of ceramics. Um, so it was really interesting to be there and see that. And then the it's kind of interesting because the University of Page is set up so that it's right um, kind of literally touching the building that the factory is based in. So all the ceramic students are working right next to where the factory is um, in that sense. So that was really interesting. And then I was able to have a small studio there and make work while, while I was there. Um, I remember having like a couple different friends that went to Hungary and came back with like really big bottles of different lusters. Yeah. <laughs> stockpile luster while you were there. I did in Stockpile Luster, and I do, um, you know, know someone who's done that as well. But um, uh, I did um, go to Ketchkamet, which is probably where they stockpiled their luster, um, okay. up by there. Uh, that was a really wonderful experience. So how the Fulbright is set up is that most people on a student scholarship go for nine months, and I was able to extend for a little bit into the summer and go to Ketchkamet and do a one month residency there. So that was a really great way to kind of end my time in Hungary um, and be a little bit closer to Budapest. So Ketchkomet is like 45 minutes to an hour out from Budapest. Cool. So yeah. like, what were you making work the whole time that you were there? Or what were you like doing on it? Yeah. I pulled out a couple things that I made. If you want me to grab anything, I can do that. Um, I made a lot more smaller works just for the logistics of being able to get stuff back. Um, and I can grab some stuff yeah. if you want. Like. So, I kind of, like from the start with my ceramics, I feel like I've always wanted it to kind of have a life beyond 
like a finished fired object. So I don't have these all assembled now, but essentially I made stuff that has like a space where I can hold other materials within it to make an entire composition. I can share images of these two. If you want me to share the screen. Yeah, do it. Yeah, so like this guy would be, this is like cardboard with fabric and thread and then paper and gouache. So they're kind of like holders for drawings and other materials and like mixing, mixing materials together in that way. Um, let me pull up that guy. So I kind of like that these things still have the potential to change and hold something different later as an entire composition. Um, I definitely, um, most of my work has been pretty black and white or leans towards black and white. And while I, was, while I was there, I kind of experimented more with getting more color into the work and really just trying something new in that way. So you mean that you, your work was like black and white at when you were at Cranbrook, like everything um, was like a... I think it just, it like tends to lean more, like I'm kind of have like a small fear of color and then sometimes all of that just comes flooding out, like I have missed it and I need to insert it somewhere into some of the work, if that makes sense. Um, totally. Show yeah. us some more stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, so I guess, here, I'll grab a bigger thing. So like I have a lot of my stuff is like parts and pieces. So I have a couple of like a couple of these that I hand built that I don't even have a finished piece for yet. Like I have some ideas with what I will do with it as like a wall piece, but I haven't resolved it yet. Um, and then I'll just show you. So like this is something one of the larger things I made while I was over there, and then this comes together into a bigger piece. I'll just pull this image up again to show you so it makes sense. Yeah, so I'm again like mixing materials, fabric and ceramic, and kind of trying to still have that option to rearrange these parts together differently or maybe set them up differently in different installations, different settings. Yeah. It's, it, you talk to, can you talk to us a little bit about your relationship with like between s design and function, design, function, and ceramic specifically? Yeah, that's something I definitely think about all the time. I think my work leans more kind of into design um like i'm definitely thinking a lot about just like the pure form itself um so like when i started doing ceramics i mostly did pottery and like folk growing and cups and functionality um and i think i just wanted some of that to still carry over into the sculptural work that i was ultimately more interested in doing so that's why i always have this fascination with like what the clay can be or what a piece can be beyond its fired state. Um, and I think that's where that's coming from is kind of just harking back to the, you know, what ceramics is in its um, most fundamental sense, like functional vessels and cups. Do you still make functional work at all? Sometimes, but like pretty, pretty rarely at this point. Like I do really, um, much more so enjoy the sculptural work. Um, if I make anything functional now, it's jewelry. Like I've been working with um, mixing metals and ceramics as well. That's kind of like a more recent thing. Um, and because it's kind of newer or uh, on the newer side for me, I'm kind of focusing on that functionality over the sculptural part of it now, just kind of like getting in tune with the material and learning what it can do before I start to turn it into something that's not functional. Do you have any pictures handy of your jewelry? I don't have um, pictures, but I, mean, I do have 
Yeah. Yeah. I know they're on Instagram. Yeah. I'll try hold it up and see if it translates at all. Oh, wow. But like that's um, porcelain and then silver. So what I really love about being able to work with these two things together is the fact that of course the ceramic can withstand the heat of the solder, like the soldering process and the metal heating up. Um, so like the only thing I've encountered is like with something that has like an opening in the middle there. So this is like a ceramic bead, the hole in there and I'll sand it before I put the metal components around it. And if there's any kind of moisture still contained within the ceramic, of course, then the heat will cause it to break. But as long as you let it, you know, dry thoroughly before soldering around it, it can be really successful. And then it also still has like some movement to it, which is nice. It kind of, um, it does, they do look a little, they look a lot like your sculptural work, which is really nice to see. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of fun to have like a, a zone in making where you can really just, really just focus on the thing and the material. Um, sometimes I can get too carried away with, or kind of caught in what I want something to be like as a sculpture and as a final installed piece. So it's nice to have something small to kind of just play and play around with. Yeah. Um, do you show us some more pizza? Show us some more stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so something else I've been trying to do, like in terms of mixing the um, different materials together, is making kind of like things that I can weave fabric in and around. So I've got this one, and then that one back there that's kind of standing upright. Um, and this was something that I just tried really briefly to kind of show you what I'm thinking about with that. But again, still just trying to figure out how exactly I want these things to work, but I do want it to incorporate another material. So like as a kind of as a base for mixing media again. And then how, like what kind of, like what are you drawn to media wise? Like what? It, like, how do you know, or what yeah. are you looking for in a material? Um, so I, I did enjoy the fabric for a period of time, and that's kind of like what I played around with the most when I was at Cranbrook, kind of trying to figure out how it could fit with ceramics appropriately in, that, in a way that it was really truly fitting. Um, but I've honestly found that metal might have more potential in that it goes through a lot of the same processes in, in, um, as ceramics does. So like with the heat and the forming, it has a lot, you know, of ways that it can integrate itself better with, with ceramics. Um, so, you know, I find that sometimes the fabric is appropriate depending on what pieces I'm working with, but sometimes, you know, I think that the metal has a lot of potential too. Yeah. And then, go ahead, Gus. Well, I was wondering, I, I think, um, like, the more I've gotten to know Cami in, like, the last year, the more I've gotten to know about uh, Cranbrook, mm -hmm. which I think, it, it, like, it's such a specific school. And I wonder if you guys just want to talk a little bit about, like, what, because it's funny, it's just a high school and a graduate school, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, it sounds like such an amazing place. <laughs> it, it really is like I almost wasn't even you know I wasn't really considering necessarily going to grad school after um, going to Pratt and everything but then when I found out what Cranbrook was and the way it's set up like having it be more kind of set up like a residency rather than an, an MFA a typical MFA um, I was drawn to it for that reason I don't know if Cammy has a similar um, it was different. I mean, yeah, I think that I couldn't handle probably going to school to go into class anymore. Like I was kind of done with that. And Cranbrook was really great for me in that like I didn't have to um, have the weight of like the institution The you know, so that was really good. And just the just the pure time to just work on your work without any 
interruptions was pretty is pretty incredible. But also there's like I think, and you can speak to this too, because we had completely, because you, your artist in residence, basically you're like mentor is, you know, kind of who you want to work with is what is the thing that should draw you to grad school anyway. So our situations were so different, but the situations that we have in common is that um, the Midwest is like, you know, pretty, the Midwest loves crafts. They just do. So um cranbrook is like just it's a great place to kind of explore pure craft and also at the same time kind of look at design mm -hmm. and so you know when you go there you just sort of feel you know you're surrounded by eames immediately like you like the first thing you do is like learn learn about george nelson and harry bertoya and noel and there it's also like so that becomes part of your vernacular like right off the jump. And then, you know, then once you, once you get through that, you can sort of like kind of figure out where you are in the canon of Cranbrook students, you know, and there's not that many of us. Really. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice and small. Yeah. Do they, so, uh, sorry, finish your thought. No, please. I'm, well, I was. I, mean, I could talk about it forever. <laughs> That's enough about yeah. that. No, yeah. I was, I'm curious. Well, you want to know? <laughs> does, does Cranbrook like are the departments like do they uh, intermingle or do they like because they have ceramics and fiber and I don't know how else they break it up. But is there a lot of crossover or, or do you stay pretty separate there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's, it's definitely there and encouraged to have plenty of cro crossover between departments. Um, so when I was there, it was 10 departments, um, architecture, fiber, ceramics, um, photography, all of the main areas. And um, so you don't really have classes, but you can do this thing called an elective and you can then become part of another studio's schedule essentially so i did one with painting for one semester um i did one with fibers for one semester and then one with sculpture so you just you become part of their department family in a way and you participate in all their critiques um you know attend maybe dinners that they're having um, as well with visiting artists so you're very much integrated into their world for that semester and of course it doesn't stop with that semester either like you Get to know people in that area and then you continue to just exchange ideas in that way yeah that's cool and has that like informed the way that you're teaching now or like are you teaching um like ceramics courses that are like function based or is there is sculpture mixed in with that and are you mixing in like fiber with your students as well um so i taught a range of things now intro throwing and advanced um our intro course definitely gears towards hand building and sculpture which is really nice because you know that's where i'm coming from so i feel like the most to offer in that um and it's uh i definitely encourage like a mixed media approach to things um and i find that a lot of students have the natural tendency to want to incorporate um what they're they're doing in other parts of the school into the ceramics um, so I definitely do encourage that especially you know towards the end of an intro semester if you want to take a final project and add to it in another material that's I think a good thing so yeah definitely yeah and then how was your experience of working with Anders Ruwald it was great yeah i really like anders um that as you said before like you you go to cranbrook because you want to work with the person who's there so anders was there um when i was at cranbrook um and i think he was an excellent role model in you know what ceramics can be and what you know i am trying to do with my own work um in that his work is you know it can be seen from that design standpoint but also the ceramic standpoint you know in equal parts um so that was really a wonderful experience to be there while he was working there in his studio 
And then can you talk about, um, do you think about like craft in itself when in your, in your pieces? Because I feel like you, I feel like your work is like sometimes about craft, uh, especially with all, because you're using traditional crafts materials. So, I mean, I feel like you're referencing that whether, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. Yeah. Um, do you mean craft in like what might be expected of ceramics as a material or? Yeah, maybe like the, maybe just like the idea of craft in itself, like what it is, what it is and how it functions in, in the world, especially now. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely do aim to have like a certain finish with my pieces, I guess, if that's what you mean. Um, like to not totally, like just because I'm incorporating other materials and treating it slightly differently, not just foregoing like the history of the material. Um, and like uh, much of my stuff here is glazed. So like following it through on that process or that part of the process. And in that way, I would say I'm true to the, the craft. <clears throat> Um, do you have some more picks? Do you have some more picks? Yes. Um, so let me see what I can show you. Um, so this was from Cranbrook. So this is like a couple of things installed all together. Uh, so like I've also been or try to think about how ceramics and the finished pieces can kind of take up space without being colossal if that makes sense so just like being one fixed object um, so these were a couple of different things that I had made at Cranbrook so like the piece on the floor comes apart into different square sections um, it's MDF and foam and fabric. And then the umbrella part is um, a ceramic piece with um, canvas as well. So it got, kind of all comes together to take up that space temporarily, but it does all break apart into sections as well. Yeah, that's such a fun part of, like I remember when I was in grad school and I kept making really big things like, um, and then all of a sudden your studio is just like full of all the shit that you don't know what to do with anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so is my parents' garage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah uh, that was stuff. I was surprised how much I still had with me because I know how much is still back in New York as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you talked like just a little bit about um, like sometimes working with a like a sort of an end game in, in mind, but also sometimes just like building components. But are there like sketches that happen at different points when you're making these things or is it? Uh, yeah, um, I'm trying to think, let me grab something else. So, um, so I, this is not my, this is my most recent sketchbook, so it's, not exactly everything that I have here, but I'll spend a lot of time just working through stuff, um, kind of just jotting down. This is kind of like a good example of my brain on paper, but just different forms and shapes, and then a lot of notes on how I might put something together too. So just kind of, um, I definitely use drawing as more of a like uh, figuring out the final form, like no, kind no, of no, exactly no, 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 how no, 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 closer hmm? to the camera. <laughs> how exactly I want things yeah. to fit together. So like um, really getting that balance right, even if the shapes are super simple. Um, yeah. yeah, no, isn't it, there's something like kind of addicting about trying to figure out different ways to connect ceramic pieces 
Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely a fun challenge that sometimes can be frustrating, but it's also rewarding when it works, you know, and it fits together nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jen, oh, Jen, we have a question. How long do things stay in your notebook before you work on them? That's a good question. Um, some things will stay in there quite a while, and then, you know, every once in a while, I'll flip back through and find something that I didn't, you know, follow through on and pick it up again. Um, but if I really, you know, I get it down and I really am certain about the form, I'll jump right into the making part of it. Um, so, yeah, it really depends. I do like to, you know, as soon as I have any kind of thought, put it down, even if I don't revisit it again for a month or two months. Can I ask you a question? Can you show us like a piece? I mean, just because I know that I have these and I kind of want to know what you, what you think. Do you have pieces that are like kind of transition, like big transitional pieces? So like that changed sort of your, like your work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes um, I'll make something and I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be like a year. A year of I'm that. Like, just like, yeah, like, I'm like, oh my God, this is the best idea. I could do this for a year or something. Um, I mean, I think you saw this piece at some point because I did it a while ago, but um, let me pull up a picture. I pulled it in here. So, like, this was, like, right after undergrad, like, trying this linking kind of chain piece with color to make fabric and a textile and even though I you know I did a couple of smaller pieces like this and ultimately decided that um I was interested in like the overall concept more so than the like tedious labor of making these things over and over again so I would say in terms of like first step out of school and that setting and moving into things I'm interested in this was one of those pieces um and then also like the two pieces to the right now those were kind of like another transition for me into what i'm most interested in now yeah what is that umbrella made out of I like the, yeah. oh yeah the here so the like handle part is ceramic and then the fabric part is canvas and stitching. And then like you can get a sense for what the floor is made of with the way that it rests on the foam and the material that it's made out of there. Wait, I'm seeing on your screen there's an image of a guy or of a person. Yeah, will you click on that? I don't think I understood the scale um, yeah oh, it's yeah. Like a balcony this is not ceramic at all so this is a wire and wood like a wood frame and then wire with fabric scrunched and pulled around the wire um so installed up high like balcony height and then in the space that it's in there's there is a second level it's in the sculpture studios at cranbrook so there's like a staircase that to the off to the left there so you can kind of see that it sits at the level of where the second floor would be. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, I mean, all those pieces I did there, like just more interacting with the space and architecture. Um, and again, trying to make pieces that are more expansive without just being, you know, ceramic and just taking up space in that way. And will you show us, will you show us some? more show some more of your work like now that we've like now i want to see it all yeah can we see the pink pieces in the background yeah exactly it's fun <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird because all of this goes together into like a bigger piece but yeah so like this is on the wall and I'm just gonna pull this up one more time to show you. So 
like none of my stuff kind of or not very much of it fits like small and neatly yeah so like these are the top section and then the bottom section and i don't have the around parts but all of it fits together in that way i mean are you looking at like it almost it's very it's super architectural but it feels a little bit like versailles at the same time like, yeah like a little bit too uh or like very de decorative like de yeah deck a little it's like you've pared down pared it down to like it's bare base minimal Mm -hmm. form. Yeah, um, I mean, that's definitely what I'm kind of thinking about, especially, you know, I think my time in Hungary, like the time spent there really influenced that just because of the architecture that exists there, that you've got like really beautiful, ornate kind of art deco buildings, and then you've also got like very um, kind of stark modernist buildings, and just the kind of both of those things combining together in your daily walk around um, whatever of the city or country that you're in was really, like, really interesting to me. So what's going to happen with your work when you're walking around Cleveland? <laughs> well, I'm trying to really, like, I enjoy being here and drawing, you know, those comparisons. And, um, yeah, I, I think, like, knowing that, the architecture is what I'm pulling from and that's my you know source of inspiration or what have you that it architecture is everywhere and it changes everywhere and there's always something to take away from whatever your your environment is where you are so yeah yeah I hope you like Beaux-Arts architecture <laughs> yeah. um, do you have more pics you want to show us um I mean wait will you show us that green shelf that you, uh, yeah, I love that thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where is it? This guy. Yeah. So again, like the same idea of things like this all comes apart into different sections and comes together again. Um, yeah. And then once you have the piece, and once you have all the parts, do they, is that the piece or are they like, you could take those pieces and put them in a different piece later? Are they tied to, I guess are they like tied to the photograph? Or yeah. can they like change? I, so with this, like, this would be really the extent of how this fits together because it is so made for itself in all these parts and something I'm trying to do more so is have things that can more easily fit with other pieces. Um, yeah. And then there's a piece like right behind it that's yeah, like a super bright yeah right there. Let's see that. Yeah, so something like this, like the smaller parts of this could lend themselves to fitting into something else a little bit more easily. Is that just glaze? Yeah. Yep. It's such a nuts yellow. Yeah, I kind of prefer the muted colors more so, but I tried out, you know, some different brighter colors while uh, I was over there. Jen loves this. Jen from Brooklyn Clay loves this piece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one is she says it's like lacquer play-doh uh, it is very bright <laughs> it is yeah um, let's see. and then when I held the little parts on their own I kind of realized they looked like a really kind of cartoonish stick of butter or something I was just <laughs> thinking that yeah <laughs> yeah that's great Yeah. And then one more, can we see the next to the green shelf? Zero eight, JPEG zero eight. Let's see that one too. Oh yeah. That's just another one of like the little pieces I have here with kind of as a holding place for other other materials to make that complete composition.
So ceramic and cardboard fabric and then paper and gouache for the top, the blue and white part. I really like these pieces. Yeah. Thank you. I keep, like I keep expecting them to be like, like I'm. I keep imagining the function, and then you know what I mean. Like what's the, like the typical function of the pieces, and then, but you're like forcing me into this new function, which I kind of like too. Yeah, they're, they're definitely more like fun or playful. The smaller pieces. Cool. What do you think, Gus and Anders? Do you guys have any more questions? Um, what is your, like, what is your studio set? Just, I'm curious about, like, what type of work you do from home. Like, are you set up to make wet work there? Or do you do most of the, like, fiber work there? What is your setup like? Yeah, you can, I mean, I usually have these tables cleared. So I have two tables and then I'll switch between like one is for clay work and then one is for whatever I'm trying to do else at that time. So fabric, just to like keep things clear of each other. Mm -hmm. Generally would just make small, you know, smaller things that I can transport out of clay here. Um, and then um, fabric or I also have, I don't know if you can see, but I have like a little bench pin yeah. So for jewelry making, I can saw and do like a lot of the cold working parts of that here as well. Um, cool. So yeah, kind of just keeping it smaller in scale in terms of making here. And then you have your the studio at Akron too. Yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do now that you're hanging out at home? Are you working on stuff right now? Yeah, I, it's actually... It was, it was nice to pull all this stuff out and then like force myself to kind of see it again because it was definitely a lot of it was still you know wrapped up um from transporting it all over the place um i've definitely been working on like the smaller things the metal working um and the fabric parts of things and now having time to really just sit with that part of the work and make it uh, figure it out yeah cool yeah, it's actually, that's actually a great question because people are, um, a lot of people are like questioning what they can do in this sort of weird home time. It's like everyone has all the time to do all the projects, but it's sort of like, what do you do? Right. Or if you're missing like one thing, you don't want to, do you want to <laughs> go to the store and get that one thing? Or like, how can you, yeah, work around it? I think it's a good challenge to have though, you know, kind of with what's what's in your space. Yeah. Yeah, it is really funny to see, like I made some slabs here at our apartment, um, but that's like as far as I can seem to get myself to work on stuff here. Yeah. Um, they're pretty good slabs. They're pretty nice slabs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to think like it'll get into a kiln at some point right yeah well yeah I know that's like such a funny part of it too is like trying to plan that stuff so do you make your you make your stuff at home and then you said it's like a 45 minute drive to yeah so like I really do just do the small stuff here um but I might branch out and go a little bit bigger just because like you're saying there's just so much time now to work from home um and then just I keep it you know keep it leather hard so it's easier to transport um yeah, yeah. you can't like uh steal a test kiln from school or anything and bring it home well I don't know about that <laughs> I don't really think about that move <laughs> yeah um, Cool. There's always like pit firing or something, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can go to my niece's backyard, I'm sure. I'll hook you up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'll be great. Um well thank you so so much for doing this. Um, yeah, it's been fun. 
it's so great to see your work. And then people can go to your website and your Instagram and see stuff too, right? Yeah. What's your website? Um, TanyaAnnLong.com. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah nice to meet you guys too. Hopefully I'll be back visiting New York at some point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Come to Brooklyn Clay. Um, Laura Vogel says thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we're like reading. The, I'm like reading the comments. <laughs> and Jen yeah. says thank you. Please come visit. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. Well, good luck, Tanya. Thanks so much, and uh, good luck through, you know, teaching online and all the Cleveland stuff. Same to yeah, you. Have fun in Cleveland. Go to everywhere that Cami said. Okay. Well, I mean, I when it, everything reopens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's then that go everywhere I say. Yes. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.